In order to create a new stencil project, I will need a recent version of Node.js and also npm and you can take a look if you've got that installed by typing in node b or npm I believe it's v as well. All right, so I've got uh, node and I also got npm installed. It's not the, I think 16 might be the last version, but I think 14 is also okay. Just make sure to have a newer version of node installed. Now I'm going to change uh, the directory to my projects directory. I've got this projects directory right here, and I'm going to create a new stencil project by saying npm init stencil and now it's going to ask me if i want to create a component or an app now for this tutorial i'm going to create a component the project name should be stencil let's call it stencil js yt tutorial i'm going to confirm and it has created my project now i'm going to cd into that And I'm going to open up VS Code by typing in code. Okay, so now we are here within uh, our VS Code and I've got my project right here. So if I take a look, I will see a source directory and in there I will have my components and I also have my index.html, um, some index TypeScript and we will get into the details later. But first of all, I will have to say npm install and then I can say npm start and that will start my project. So npm i. Now that it has installed all of the dependencies, I can now say npm start and that will start the development server. And if I now pull up my Chrome, I can see here I'm on localhost. Uh, 3333 and you can see that it says hello world I'm stencil don't call me a framework JS so I apologize because I've called it a framework before now let's go back to VS code and uh, first of all I would like to take a look at what we've got within that project so we've got uh, the package JSON and everything uh, should be quite familiar in here and um, I would start to take a look at this index HTML right here so this is just a regular index HTML with the basic HTML structure that we all know. It has a head and a body. And within the head, we've got meta and we also got the title. Now we've also got two script tags right here. One script tag is with type module. So it will import the um, JavaScript modules. And the second script tag says no module and it will just import this JS file right here. And the second script tag, this is for older browsers, for legacy browsers, like for example, IE11. And because IE11 doesn't support any JavaScript modules, so it wouldn't be able to load those. That's why you need those two scripts, just to make sure that also legacy browsers are also supported. The next thing that you will see right here is another HTML tag and we've taken a look at this before. So now you know a little bit where this comes from, but this is, it looks like an HTML tag, but it actually is a custom web component and it says my component. And this my component has um, multiple, or in this case, two parameters. Uh, one is called first and the other one is called last and we will pass a string down to that parameter and Then we also have this closing tag right here now this component is Defined within our source directory and within that source directory We have another directory called components and within that components directory there are also uh, there are all of our web components uh, stored so components has a subdirectory called my component, which defines this right here. And this directory has a CSS file. So once you create a new component, stencil.js uh, will give you the option to create a CSS file as well as the other files. So you've got that CSS file right here. You've also got an end-to-end -end testing file 
which is very neat. It also comes with a unit testing file. And there is the bread and butter of our web component. It's the mycomponent.tsx. So as you can see, we're using TypeScript here. And um, within this component, we are returning JSX, which I really like because I know JSX already from React. Now we can go through this component from top to bottom. Uh, so we're importing all our dependencies. And the first thing that we can see here is this component or it says at component. Now what this is, it's a decorator and decorators are used to collect all metadata about a component. For example, at component declares a new component. And if you come here to stencil.js.com and go to the documentation to components API, then you can see a list of all of the decorators that stencil.js provides. And for example, uh, we're taking a look at this component decorator and this declares a new web component. So if we take a look here, this, com uh, this decorator is kind of the entry point for your web component. In here, you will define the name or the tag. So because we've named this my component, that's why we can use the name my component within our index HTML, right? Now, this decorator component, it requires an object and this object requires at least this property call tag. So that means that you will have to give a name to your component and everything down here that is optional. For example, the style URL where you pass the URL to uh, your style sheet, that is optional because maybe you don't even need a style sheet for one of your components. That might be the case as well. And the last property is shadow that defines the shadow DOM. And if you hover over this property, then uh, there will also be a definition or a little bit a, a documentation about this property. And as you can see here by the question mark, that means that it's optional. And it says that if true, the component will use the native shadow DOM encapsulation, it will fall back to scope if the browser does not support shadow DOM natively. For example, I believe that IE 11 doesn't use, uh, doesn't support the shadow DOM natively and it defaults to false. So if you don't set it to true, it will default, default to false. Next, you can see a syntax, which is uh, kind of um, familiar from React as well. So you export a component and within that component, you can define some props, just like a React component that will receive some props, you can define the props that your uh, web component should get. So for example, here, we've defined the first name, which is first, and it receives a string. As you can see here within your index HTML, that's this prop right here. Second prop will be middle, which is not used by the index HTML right here. So it's not a required prop. And the last prop is this last, which also takes a string. And as you can see here, it's given a string. Now you can also define methods within your component. So you can just define a regular method um, that returns something. And the last thing is the render method which will then render all of your JSX, just like you know it from uh, React. So this is very similar to React, where you also have this render method that returns JSX. And um, in here, you can still call this method that you've defined within your component. And this also, it looks like uh, React but it looks like the older React where you still used class components. So you can um, access your methods with this dot get text. So if you want to edit our web component, I could say instead of stencil that it would say Lee middle. I think it was middle. This dot middle. Um, let me say L4. 
and the last would be don't call me a now let me change this don't call me a developer which wouldn't make any sense but i'm a youtuber all right now I've saved this uh, HTML file. Now let me go back to the browser and you can see that it also hot reloaded. I could just uh, open this site without reloading. So now it says, hello world, I am Lee L4, don't call me a developer, I'm a YouTuber, which doesn't make any sense, but that's okay. I'm a YouTuber that also develops, or I'm a developer that also YouTubes, it doesn't matter. So that was the overview of how a component is built. There are many, many more things to discover and there are many more methods and decorators that Stencil.js offers, but it would be uh, too much to get into detail to into all of them. I would just recommend you checking out the documentation from Stencil uh, if you would ever need to know why or when to use a, any lifecycle hook, everything is documented very well in here and um, now the next thing that we want to do is we want to create our own component and we will do that in the next video.